going in Can I hide in you Breeze well Alright, so we're going to start the initial walk around on the engine to do the in-service. This is solely for research purposes. In-service will be done on shift at a later date, but just quick. Grinder, for instance, underneath the bumper right here behind it is a yellow disconnect. There's a solenoid that has the possibility of going bad. It will be stuck in the on position. You will not be able to stop it. By disconnecting the yellow disconnect underneath, it will stop it, and then Greg can repair the solenoid and replace it. Again, that is right here underneath the bumper, right behind the uh, Q2B siren. Uh, right here at the front bumper, uh, it's pretty standard. It's empty right now, but this is where the cables and chains will go when uh, the snow starts flying again in Tahoe. All right, on this, uh, in this front compartment here, we have 75 feet of inch and a half wildland hose. It will eventually be one inch hose with the one inch TFT, but currently that stuff is on order and has not shown up. There is a fifth, the chief nozzle without the handle in the front, and again, 75 feet of inch and a half wildland hose. Moving around to the side of the engine, everything else is pretty standard for the side. Um, inside the cab here, we'll get to in a little bit. Um, there is no key box or anything right now. Uh, Greg has that ordered and he will pick that up at a later date. In here is the pull-out tray with the SCDA. You pull this red knob right here and the tray comes out. The way that the cabinet's manufactured makes it kind of a bear to get the SCBA and everything in and out of there. It's kind of a trial by error kind of thing. We're working through the problems, but right now it all fits. Everything's in there, and this is where the captain will get his SCBA. Inside the cab, uh, the EMS compartment above where that SCBA is, uh, currently there's two shelves, and we will have the miscellaneous uh, medical equipment such as uh, gauze and that type of stuff that will go in there as well. Uh, we'll start with the crosslays. Crosslays here have two pull-out trays. These pull-out trays come onto the ground after the hose has been deployed. Load the hose into the tray, slide the tray back in. The connection's on the upper right hand side here and then on this side it's on the opposite end. This hose is made to be deployed either direction. Uh, this nozzle right here is got a pistol grip on it. Um, we will switch it out when we get another flat TFT nozzle for that. And it's the standard three and five uh, big loop, little loop that we have on all the other engines. This compartment is going to house uh, just a short piece of uh, LDH and another small two and a half inch uh, filler hose. Um, and then the captains can try and put some of their gear in there should they need to. Moving to the tall cabinet. Right here, this little clip here, it's just like on engine 23, you pull it out and out slides the whole thing. In anticipation of this engine moving to station 23, rope rescue equipment will go in the bed right here and then this that has the blank spot now is where the Rit Scott Orange Rip Pack will be. Uh, the shovels are mounted on the wall and two commie tools and then a push broom is just laying in here right now as well. Um, on the back side we have uh, neck braces, uh, the uh, KED and the Sager split on this side. To activate the step on the bottom, all you need to do is you see this lock here, push in, push up, and pull the step out until it stops, let the lock slide, it will not open. These are tied to the uh, alarm in the cab, and I'll show, you to, I'll show that to you later, where that alarms and how you will know that there is something on the exterior of the engine that's open that isn't an actual cabinet door. Up here in the tall cabinet, currently is empty, but we will be placing water bottles, 
or cases of water and MREs, and then ice rescue and uh, water rescue equipment will go in this cabinet. Again, to put it back in, just pull in, slide until it locks. This pump, this pump panel has been enclosed, so it's a little slightly different than the last engine. We have two hooks on here, here, and here. This is for the captain to place his uh, turnouts and all that stuff in here, his coat, um, stuff like that. Right now, currently, the equipment's not in yet, but there's a 30 degree, six inch threaded to five inch stores fitting that will go on this intake here. It has a pressure relief valve behind the panel, so you will not need to have the big uh, relief valves like we have on engine 21 and engine 25 for the pressure. They are set from the factory at 125 PSI. Um, there's a number two, discharge, number two discharge here, number four. Um, I'm going to be mounting a stores to two and a half inch female that you can use on either one of these to flow large diameter hose if you need to in a relay pumping operation. Um, I have the mount and it's drilled and tapped, it's just not in place yet. We have a store or two spanner wrenches and a hydrant wrench that will be right here um, inside this cabinet. Moving back to the next cabinet, we have all of our rope rescue gear. You have the quick line and the rip rope in here. The AED and neck brace and head blocks are on the top shelf. And then you have your cribbing and EMS gear in here. Um, to my knowledge, we are not placing any other further equipment so the captain can again place more of his uh, PPE in this cabinet should he need to. This cabinet is just like the others, you push the little circle, it opens, and it's a spare SCBA bottle in here. And then it just clicks closed. In here, we have a drop down light and a corded uh, power cord. The generator is on order, so there is no way to power this light currently. But when the generator gets here, it'll be just like engine 23, it's a little 4000 Honda generator just like on there. We have gas for all the small engines. Um, the Domar for the chainsaw is still on order. Chainsaw is just like every other chainsaw on every other Type 1. It has the large D-handle pull start and the chaps and everything else are in here. Saw kits behind it. This compartment is just like this one. And here's the hose compartment. We have two red packs and one green pack. We also have uh, the hotel packs along with the vestibule lines, the irons, and the high-rise pack here. For now, the hydrant bag is in this compartment, but it will be relocated to the rear once uh, we get all the equipment situated and everything like that. Moving to the back of the engine, in here, you have a 14 foot roof ladder and a 24 foot extension ladder. There is a six foot rubbish hook, an eight foot rubbish hook that's on order, a 10 foot pike pole and a six foot pike pole. The 10 foot pike pole is not in yet, it will be here soon. There's also a 10 foot attic ladder in the middle. Uh, two backboards, so it's just the same. The only thing that's different is the ladders are on top and the backboards are on the bottom. On all the other engines, it's flipped the other direction. Um, that was so we could make room for not having electric uh, discharges on the engine. Back here, on this engine currently, is where all the Homatro tools are for extrication and all that stuff. The salvage covers um, and carry-all are all back here on this. The shelf that's below the pull-out tray does not retract with the tray, so you have to reach in behind all this stuff if you need to get a salvage cover out. And again, it's the same thing as um, the other tray in the EMS compartment. You just pull this little orange ball and the tray slides out. If you want to push the tray back in, you push the ball in and it slides back in. We switched to large diameter hose. So you'll find on this engine, There's a thousand feet 
of large diameter on this side. The Y line is still 200 feet. There are stingers made so that the coupling ends about right here at the end of the engine so you have a true 200 feet of hose. And then it's loaded the same way as every other engine. On this side, you have a thousand feet of three inch, and then the attack line or two and a half inch TFT is on this side, and there's 200 feet with a stinger, so that you have a true 200 feet of hose coming off the back of the engine. The hose complement for this engine is 200 feet of two and a half, thousand feet of three inch, thousand feet of large diameter hose, five inch, and 200 feet of two and a half with a Y on the captain's side. You have a foam capable rear discharge right here. This discharge is for when we do wildland fires. There's a Y in the engineer compartment that you can hook onto here and pump your two, uh, two uh, inch and a half lines when you're doing structure protection or anything of that sort. Or if you need to pump a hose lay for a wildland fire. Moving around to the operator side of the cap in engine. In here you have your road cones, CO2 extinguisher, uh, ABC and water can. You have your can of absorbent and your vent fan. Uh, eventually we're going to have another thing here for road flares in the wheel chalk. Um, Greg's still manufacturing the little holder for it so that we can get that mounted and everything else. This tray has the little push down tab and then the tray comes out. Just like on our current engines, pulls out to here lift the thing off, you want to push it back in, push the, the tab down and it slides back in until it locks. Uh, behind the two extinguishers is the foam pickup and I will go over that in just a minute. Um, another SCBA tube, again just push the circle and the door opens and you can retrieve the SCBA bottle. You have your fuel fill here. In this compartment you have a flathead and a pick head on the outside. On the inside you have your chain tool, bolt cutters, two Pulaski's, and a five or a ten pound sledge. Moving to the engineer's compartment, set up similar to the other engines, you have all of your fittings on this second shelf that retracts out so that you can easily grab any of the stuff that you need to get off the shelf. Um, you have the Y, an extra nozzle, and all that stuff. Your smooth bores are up here on the, mounted on the wall, and then the garden hose tank fill for the engine. Um, you have four stores, large diameter uh, spanner wrenches mounted on the wall. Um, your K tool and J tools are up here on this top shelf with duct tape and some other miscellaneous flagging and your can of WD-40. On the bottom shelf you have road flares or fusees and then two uh, toolboxes that are set up the exact same way as the other engines. You have your rubber mallet, there's a wire brush, um, a cable tool and some uh, and then here uh, is where a, gated, a gate valve will go. The gate valve currently is in the hydrant bag, um, but the extra gate valve that we have is being repaired. Moving to the pump panel. So as you can see, the pump panel is laid out fairly self-explanatory. You have your water fill and your foam fill. This has 40 gallons of Class A foam. There is no B foam on this engine. Foam Pro 2000, just like we have on all the other current engines, and then the information center. You have your pump intake pressure, your pump discharge pressure, RPM, and then any info that you have. You have three green lights, you're good to go, and your pump engaged, okay to pump, and throttle ready will be illuminated when the engine's ready to pump and you're in the right uh, setting. If you need to, sw when you 
initially start the pumping process, you need to hit mode so it lights up the PSI light. If you need to switch to RPM, again, drop it to 50, below 50 PSI, hit mode again, it'll switch to RPM, and then you can increase. The preset button is, pre is set from the factory at 125 PSI. It will pump any discharge you have open to 125, granted that you have the water capacity to pump that, like water coming in and all that. Tank to pump, tank fill are right next to each other with the prime button here. You have your jump line up front, your left rear discharge, which is your wildland uh, discharge, your two and a half left side pre-connect, and your two and a half right side pre-connect. The deck gun is here, your number one and number two cross lays here, um, number two discharge, number four discharge, and then number one and number three. This is your left side, which is this one. Master intake valve, it is here. Again, there's a valve set behind the panel set to 125 PSI. If it goes above that, you will dump water to atmosphere. You will see water dump out, so gate it down if you need to. This is your right side. It is electric, and um, it's just like on engine 23. Left for open, right for closed. Follow the lines. Pretty self-explanatory. Uh, when we go over the foam, It has this hose. You will need a Class B foam bucket. And it goes right here where it says foam inlet. So you just take these, take this cap off with these two rings, just like this. Make sure that the rings are facing out. And then you slide it on. And then pull the rings closed. Once that's done, you dip the, dip the end of the hose into the bucket. Onboard tank means that you're on A foam, so it's just switched to the left. It's just a one switch, it's always to the left. You have to flush so that we do not get class A and B foam mixed together in the lines. Run it to flush for anywhere from 30 seconds to a minute to allow it to flush the system. And then you're going to do offboard pickup, is you're going to be this one here, and then you turn that. Once you get that all on, right here is offboard bleeder. You're going to turn this to the on position, which is perpendicular to the rest of the panel. Once it's perpendicular, this is going to create an assist with a vacuum to pull the foam out of the engine and into, or out of the bucket and into the engine. Once you're doing that, you're flowing B foam. When you start flowing B foam and you've got a good draft, you can shut that off and you don't need to leave it on. It will actually dump some of the foam out through the bottom of the engine. And then once you're done, back to flush. Put some clean, get a bucket of clean water and uh, flush your tube and all that stuff and then put it back to B, which would be your onboard pickup. Put it back on, flush the system once you get back to the station. Make sure that you've got all that B foam out of there so at the next time that you need to use A foam, it's flushed and good to go. This compartment here, again, will have just a short piece of 5 inch uh, connector hose. And then this is the other side of the cross leg. On this side, you got the blue line and the red line. They're currently set up with nozzle for the blue lines on this side of the engine, red lines on the other side. This is your hose indicator here that lets you know that the hose, where the nozzle is on the other side. Moving back over here, um, on the inside of this compartment, if you pull it out, on this side of the wall, we have our lockout kit. This is for we use to get into cars that are locked, that have small children, dogs, or you know, people that we don't like inside. One more thing to go over on the pump panel. The deck gun to deploy, it's not a moment switch anymore where you just hit it and it deploys. Hold it for about a five count It'll deploy the thing and then the light will stop flashing and be permanently illuminated red to let you know that the deck gun is actually on and out of the cradle. Same goes for the tether. The tether's right here. If you need to use the tether, it's the same thing. You're gonna hit the deploy button, which is up. Hold it for five seconds 
And then instead of having left, right, up and down switches, it's on this toggle right here. You go left and right, up and down. All right, and then to change the stream, you can go to fog or straight stream here. And then we don't have an off discharge, so this button does not mean anything currently. All right, moving on to this side of the engine, you have the diesel exhaust fluid. There is a thing on the dash that'll let you know the level of it. Um, it's in here, inside this. Uh, if you raise the cab, this whole thing goes up, but the bottle will stay where it's at. It's mounted to the frame. Um, but this is how you fill it and all that stuff in the event that it's low. Inside the cab, in this cabinet here, there's one shelf and in there will be the fire, uh, will be the heat gun and the foregas. They both fit in there, pretty self-explanatory. Inside here is the other SCBA for the engineer. Again, pull the, pull the uh, red knob and the tray will come out. Um, if you want to go back in, just pull the knob again, shove the whole thing back in. And this one fits a little bit nicer inside there than the other side. Moving to the side of the cab, pretty normal right here. You have the battery switch, just like on all the other engines. One thing I do want to make note of is the two uh, foot buttons that you have right here, the one on the outside is the Q2B. So if you have the master switch on and the emergency lights activated, this will operate. The air horn is right here. Um, this one will work as long as there's at least 100 PSI in the system. Um, and then there's a siren brake for the Q2B siren up on the dash that I will show you momentarily. Right here you have the ignition switch, the start, and your headlights. On the opposite side, you have a diagnostic and a toggled switch for the drop downs just like on all the other engines. And then you have your window, left front, right front, left rear, right rear. There is no power locks. These are all manual locks and the keys are hooked to the cup holder on the doghouse. All right, we're into the cab. So in here you have a pull to telescope in and out or tilt up and down. If you push, the engine will come up and, or the thing will go up and down. Your left and right turn indicators are here as well as the intermittent wipers and all of that is, are here. When you're looking on the dash itself, you have your voltmeter, your water temp, and your oil pressure. Your RPM gauge with your hour meter is in here. Your primary air and your secondary air are right here. Miles per hour, fuel gauge, diesel exhaust fluid level, and your transmission temp. These are all the standard, and that's what all of those are. This is your information center here. Um, this will illuminate lights should an emergency or some kind of thing happen to the engine that allows you or is notifying you that there's a problem. Um, orange is just a note. Red means that you should pull over and stop when it's safe to do so and try and fix the problem or contact in, uh, mechanic gimmick. This first switch that you have here is your exhaust or is your engine jake brake. So it's either on or off and then you have low which is what it's in now. One click up is medium, all the way up is high. Your defog for the heat system is here, right here, this is the defog. Your heat is on the top, and then AC on the bottom. And then your fan speed level is right here. You have low, medium, high. This is the siren brake right here for the Q2B siren. Um, when you wind it up, you'll know as it winds back down and you're pulling up the scene and you need to shut it off, you just push the switch and it slows it down and turns it off. This is just a spare here, so it does nothing. This one is your mirror heat. If you need to adjust your mirrors, it is right here. Right here is the pump switch. You pull the yellow thing to the middle and down and then hit the D button and it pumps in fourth gear. All right, moving back over to the middle. I tried to make sure that all of the lights were more within reach than some of the other engines. So right here is your master switch. 
When you turn it on, you have your light bar, your front warning, your side warning, and your rear warning. I'm going to turn that off because it'll make a it'll make a noise. And then you have your brow light here. You have two brow lights in the front. Your left scene light, which is just the cab. Your right, oh, I'm sorry, that's all three lights on the left hand side. Your right scene lights for the right side of the cab, and your rear scene lights for the rear of the cab. You have your Whalen siren box. It's set in hands free right now, but if you need to move it to manual or change the tone because the horn doesn't work, then you can do that there. The manual switch is here. Air brake is in the middle. So that should the event that you are incapacitated and the officer needs to pull the air brake to stop the engine, he has the ability to reach it. The only other two switches you need are your work lights and compartment lights. All the rest of those switches are blank and they're dummy switches. The radio is mounted on the top and it swivels. So that way you can move it in the event that you're the only one in the engine. And then down underneath, you will see right here a USB port. That is for charging cell phones or the iPad at this time. All right, captain side compartment, you have the Sigtronics control for the headsets, a 12 volt DC uh, car battery charger. Uh, you just need to plug something into it. You can uh, charge your push to talk button, the air horn button, the Q2B siren button for the officer's side. Uh, again, this is not a brake. This will activate the siren when the master switches on and the emergency lights are activated. Um, the Wayland traffic advisor turns on with the master switch. So we have to remember right now it's set in flash. So that way when we're responding, it just flashes. But if we're on the highway or anything like that, we need to have remember to have the captain switch it to either right or left and if he wants to turn it on without the emergency switch he just turns it on here on here is our Knox box key um, and then the glove box which has the just the registration stuff in there now um, other stuff will be added at a later date um, and then you have your handhelds for the radio itself and for the PA mic for the siren. Um, this is your seat belt monitor. It monitors the front two seats. You can see I'm occupying the captain seat now, so it's red, meaning my seat belt is not clicked. It will illuminate to a green on the bottom when my seat belt is fastened. I'll show that to you right now. Over here, is the indicator lights for open compartments. So these are all fairly self-explanatory here. You have your front door, your rear door on the captain's side. This is the pump panel door. This is the rope compartment door. This is the door over the wheel. And then this is the rear door on this side of the engine. And then this would be the door on the bottom where the extrication equipment is now located currently. If any of the other doors are open, like the SCBA tubes, the tray on the bottom that you need to step up on is open, or the door above this compartment, which is where the water bottles and MREs are going to be stored, it will illuminate this light in the middle to indicate that there is something open on the, on the engine that is not one of these compartments. Likewise, on this side, the bottom one here is the ladder storage compartment. Then this light on top is the compartment where the extinguishers are. This is your tool compartment here. This is the engineer's compartment and then the pump panel compartment. And then these two doors here will illuminate as well when those doors are open. This will also illuminate should one of the EMS cabinet on the outside of the cab be open as well. Oh, I take that back. It illuminates this one here. The EMS cabinet doors go to this one. Uh, this light that you see here, this switch, is your rear AC disable. So if we turn that on, or turn it off, the rear AC activates and turns on. When it's on, you're able to turn it off from the front. Just like all the other engines, you have your rear axle diff lock, and then your front axle engage, and then the front service brake, which is always left in the on position. 
All right. To check the fluids without raising the cab, you're going to remove this. It's just snaps and push button. And then it folds down. You have your power steering, transmission, and in front of it, you can't see it from here. You have to reach down in there is your oil. And that's where you check the fluids on the engine when the cab is not lowered, or I mean not raised. Two zombie lights, two handheld flashlights, tick charger, and then your radio charger here. It has two spots on the far left as you're looking at it for the ICOMs, and then the next four are for BK radios. And in just in front of that, next to the map book box, are two handheld light chargers as well. And then if you want to look down behind you, there is also a USB charger in between the two firefighter seats. Right there, the little red light that you see, that has a USB charger for each seat. So that way, in the event of a strike team, you have a way to charge your toys and all that stuff. All right, real quick, one last thing on the uh, water level indicators on the engine. So the water level indicator on the panel is the master indicator. So this will always read true per the factory. This is the one that you should always go by. The lights that you see illuminated on both sides of the cab that are blue, yellow, and red are also water level indicators and they will indicate the level of your water. Once it gets to the yellow portion, it uh, changes all the way to yellow. And then once it gets to the red, it will switch all the way to red. Once you're below a quarter tank and have less than a quarter tank of water left, like on our current engine 23, it will blink a red light in descending fashion from the top to the bottom and flash at the bottom and continue that way until you get more water in the engine or you run out, I guess. Um, same goes for the master on the panel. Once it gets to, once it gets down to two below a quarter, it will illuminate red and then do the same descending fashion, red with a flashing red light on the bottom. So that's your uh, water level indicators. Just remember, if those ones go out, this one should is the one that you should be focusing on the most. Um, one last thing was we added coffin boxes to the top of the engine. Uh, there's currently nothing stored inside those coffin boxes. Um, there will be the uh, tents and uh, other camping equipment and stuff like that for when the engine goes out on a strike team. Um, and then any other miscellaneous gear that we need to put up there, like your red bag or 14-day uh, bag or anything like that. So it's out of the weather, not exposed or anything like that. Um, that, in a nutshell, is the uh, walk-around for the engine.